An isotope of hydrogen, H3, has a half-life of about 4,500 days. Find an equation for a model for the amount of H3 remaining from a sample of 500 atoms. So first we have to make sure that we understand what half-life means. A half-life tells us how long it will take for an initial number of atoms or an initial sample to reduce by half. The other half decays away um, and you would learn more about that in, in a physics course. So what we need to understand from this problem is the half-life is 4,500 days. So if we have an initial amount of 500, so now let's go to a table here. Let's create a table. Let's let D represent the number of days. And let's let H of D represent the, the amount of H3 remaining. All right, so initially, right, after zero days, there are 500 atoms in the sample. The half-life is 4,500 days. So after 4,500 days, there would be 250 atoms remaining. After 9,000 days, there would be half of 250. There would be 125 days. After 13,500 days, there would be half of 125, or 62.5 atoms remaining, approximately. So notice that to get the 250, I took the 500 and I multiplied it by one half. And to get to the 125, I multiplied by one half again. Well, but remember that 250 was simply 500 times one half. So I'd have the 500 times one half times one half, or one half squared. And similarly, that's 500 times one half cubed. And one half to the first is one half. And the 500 fits as 500 times one half to the zero. So I see that, I, I certainly see a pattern here. Now the problem is, how do I get from zero to zero, 4,500 to one, 9,000 to two, and 13,500 to three? And what I might recognize is, well, 4,500 divided by 4,500 is one. 9,000 divided by 4,500 is two. 13,500 divided by 4,500 is three. And so what I can do here is write the model. H of D is the initial number times one half. Now don't just write D here. That just doesn't work. Right? That would mean after one day there would be a half-life. After one day there would be 25, uh, there would be 250. So instead we need to take the number of days and divide by 4,500. Right? And so that's why I was building that pattern here. We would have to take the number of days and divide by 4,500 to get to the exponent. Let's take a look at this on a graph. So y1 is 500 times 1 half raised to the, now be careful whenever you put a fraction in the exponents, make sure you put it in parentheses. So x divided by 4,500. Let's set up our table, or I'm sorry, set up our window. Let's go from, I don't know, negative 100 days uh, to how about 15,000 days. And we'll use a scale of thousands. And on the y's, let's go from negative 10 atoms. Uh, and we had an initial value of 500, so let's just go up to 600. And let's use a scale of hundreds. 
So notice we have a decreasing function here. And again, we could trace and find some specific values. So notice, let's, let's trace uh, 9,000 days. If we trace 9,000 days, we see that we have 125 atoms. Estimate the amount of H3 remaining after 50 years. All right, so our model has D as the number of days. So the first thing we need to do here is convert this 50 years to a number of days. So let's see, 50 years. And recall that there are 365 days in one year. All right, so using that unit conversion, 50 times 365, that gives us 18,250 days. So now we can find H of 18,250, which would be 500 times 1 half to the 18,250 over 4,500. Let's use the calculator for this on the home screen. Five hundred times one half. Oops, forgot the two. Raise that to the quantity 18,250 divided by 4,500. And we find that that's approximately 30 point, I'm going to say 30.1. So conclusion, after 50 years, approximately 30 atoms of H3 remain from the initial sample.